keep it together to the end. We had a bit of a hassle yesterday, but today we're going quite nicely. We obviously won't make up time on Arpi and Kasi, but I think we've caught Colin now. So we, I think we're lying third in the, in the video sport challenge. What were the problems you had yesterday? Well, we caught that big storm in stage four and lost five minutes. And then our car cut out in one of the night stages and we spent about 11, 12 minutes extra in the stage, plus quite a bit of lateness. The Castrol Rally Fat File. Ford has won the Castrol three times, with Sorrel van der Merwe responsible for two of those victories. At the first regroup of the day, the gap between Sorrel van der Merwe and Franz Bosshoff and the Sassel Daewoo and Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson in the bank for Hyundai had stretched to just over 14 minutes. While the hard-working service crews got down to business, Kuhn discussed the dilemma that he and Hodgson faced in leading by such a wide margin. Yes, I was just complaining to Sergio. I was quite upset that he messed up our dice because that, that keeps you sharp and it uh, keeps you going you know i'd rather be chasing someone but um you got to stay out there and just I'm, I'm just going hard at the moment running running at a reasonably you know eight tenths space and not relaxing because it's as i say it's very muddy and and tricky slippery you can put it off into the trees in uh, in a split second cassie kutsia and richard leek led the battle of the off-roaders but had run into a problem cassie you lost a bit of time there Yes, uh, we blown uh, the intercooler. There's a burst in, so all the pressure of the turbo coming loose, and uh, it's a pity. But uh, Gillo going to fix, fix it now, so all the boost will be back to normal. Behind the leading Korean cars, Brandon Olafia with third, with Mitrovic and Burroughs fourth, and Ball and Duncan fifth. The Kutsia Leek and Reineke Houghton cruise with sixth and seventh, with Piazza Musso Harding slipping back to eighth after starting the day in fifth spot. Rebunch provided crews and rally followers with a welcome respite from the rigors of championship rallying, but it was soon down to work again. It was now obvious that the 25th Castrol was going to develop into a straight fight between Kuhn and Hodgson and Van der Merwe and Bosshoff. The Bank van Hyundai crew held by far the best hand, but Van der Merwe lost time in special stage 22 with an uncharacteristic error. Race cam footage of the great man spinning out. There were no surprises for guessing who was still on a charge. Hergen Fecken and Neil Faree now had assistance from the Toyota factory service crew and were still flying. At the end of stage 22, Van der Merwe was prepared to shoulder the blame for lost time. Sorrow all problems in that stage? I spun twice, but that was nothing to do with the car. That was just the driver. After their trials and tribulations earlier in the day in the team total Fiat Uno, Paolo Piazzo Musso and Cindy Harding were going about repairing some of the damage. They were starting to pull back time, while behind them, the Kingsway Daewoo, Sami Aslam and Abdul Sidi continued to motor along on the fringes of the top ten. While all five factory entered Daewoo's were still going strong in an impressive performance, time was running out for Cliffy Barker and Malcolm Jaber in the four-stick Land Rover. The pair were running out of brakes and stopping around two tons of Land Rover was starting to get a little hairy. Honours for the most uncomfortable ride on the rally went to Wade Perrins and Hamilton Guthrie in the Sandmaster. With no windscreen or side window panels, it was a chilly and muddy experience, although the pair were going along without any major problems. Very close problems after stage 23, I think. Yes, uh, we've uh, got oil on the clutch. So we started, the clutch started slipping in this last stage. Unfortunately, one of those things, you know, what can you do? Uh, Kestrel's a tough event, so we've just got to try and uh, sort out the problem and get going. You know, still got a day and a half of rallying left. You did the safari this year? Yes, uh, we did. We, we finished. We won our class, uh, the only two-wheel drive to finish uh, in uh, terrible weather. And how do you find South African rallying compared to Kenyan rallying? Uh, totally different. Yeah, this is totally the sprint. Safari is endurance. Uh, yeah, the the weather the weather is also different. Very slippery and very unpredictable. You come to one corner, it's totally slippery. Next corner is dry. So the judgment is is got to be very right at precise moments. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. 
Special Stage 25 saw Sorrel van der Merwe and Franz Bosshoff regain some of the time they lost to Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson in the previous stages. The bank from Hyundai picked up a misfire early on when water crept into the electrics and there was nothing Kuhn and Hodgson could do other than cruise along. With more rain, always a possibility as the rally started to work its way towards the second overnight stop in Umbaban, Supervan was back on song after his earlier misadventures. The Sassel Daewoo took an easy stage win, but the gap between the two Korean cars was continuing to widen. Behind Van der Merwe and Bossel, third place was still in the hands of Terry Brandt and Marty Olifere in the Autotech Golf. The gearbox change at the end of stage 24 forced them to take lateness, but this was not enough to make them lose a position. At the service point, it was fourth-placed Alan Mitrovic and Mike Burrows in the Team Total Golf, who had cause for little concern. Alan, damage at the back? What happened? Uh, we took a, a, a very uh, high bump. Uh, sideways came down on the front nose of the, cor the car. Seems to have twisted the chassis and put the, uh, amongst other things, put the exhaust out of place. I don't think it's serious. So we push on. The Castrol Rally fact file with Britain Tony Pond, the first overseas driver to win the Castrol Rally. Pond won the event twice. The final night stages of this year's Castrol Rally was expected to produce a few significant changes. Enzo Kuhn enjoys night stages and at his peak Sorrel van der Merwe had few equals when it came to rallying at night. The gap between the two front runners stayed constant and Terry Brandt and Marty Onofia maintained a firm grip on third overall and first place in Class S18 for South African cars. There was heartbreak for Ben and Isabel van der Vestesen when they were stuck in stage 25, lost the lead in the Group N category and dropped from 9th to 24th. The other big moves in the final night stages came from Cassie Fitzier and Richard Leek in the Castrol Toyota Hilux Bucky and Paolo Piazza Musso and Cindy Harding in the Team Total Fiat Uno. Kutsia and Leek took full advantage of the wet conditions in the big bucky, with Piazza Musso and Harding continuing their climb up the leaderboard. <laughs> that pair, Hergen Fekin and Neil Furry, were still at it, while Tony Ball explained that night rallying was an expensive business. Tony, it looks like a lot of money invested in the front of this car. What are these lights sort of, what are they worth? Oh. Uh, probably about 300 rand each. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, two thousand rand. Have you hit a tree? <laughs> not, not much fun. Yeah, no. But we're not, we didn't have much luck with them tonight with the mud. Going all over them. And first puddle you hit and that's the end of it. Rally leaders Kuhn and Hodgson and second place Van der Merwe and Bossel held station in the night stages. The tricky conditions at the end of the day produced the expected musical cheers behind the leading pair with Kutsia and Leek, the biggest movers on the leaderboard. The final day of a tough and gruelling 25th Castrol Rally saw the survivors head into eastern Swaziland. On the menu were a series of eight special stages in the sugarcane fields in the Simunye and Mahlumi regions. The cane stages offered another contrast for the competitors before heading back to Umbaban for the final two stages of the rally. The sugar cane stages with the water canals, a constant danger for the unwary, give the route through Samunye and Mahlumi a character of its own. With four-wheel drive and the fastest car on the rally, overnight leaders Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson quickly started to widen the gap and there was nothing Sorrel van der Merwe and Franz Bossov could do about it in the Sassel Daewoo Cello. All they could hope for was for Kuhn and Hodgson to deposit the Hyundai into the cane or a canal, or for mechanical failure to scupper the pair. <laughs> Terry Brand and Marty Olifia were safely ensconced in third position in the Autotech Golf and had a tight hold on Class S18 in the South African Championship. Behind the Autotech car, R.P. Reinecke and Robin Houghton were building up a head of steam in the big Bangfin Toyota Land Cruiser, which was showing a surprising turn of speed. Reinecke and Houghton were once again dueling with Class S16 leaders Tony Ball and Brian Duncan in the team Total Golf GTI. Ball and Duncan had spent most of the event fighting with one or more of the off-road contingent. Hergen Fekin and Neil Ferri again had the bit between their teeth, with the large crowds lining special stages taking the pair to their hearts. <laughs> Thank you.
By special stage 31, rally leaders Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson had stretched their lead to more than 17 minutes. But approaching the traditional final day Castrol Rally water splash, there were ominous puffs of smoke from the rear of the Bankfin Hyundai. Kuhn and Hodgson took the water splash very gently, with Sorrel van der Merwe and Franz Bossel steaming along behind them in second place. It was obvious something was amiss with the Hyundai. Supervan and Bosshoff also decided on discretion being the better part of valor, and there was high drama at the end of the stage when the turbo on the Hyundai had to be replaced. With the lateness penalty, the Kun Hodgson lead was now down to just over five minutes, with worried looks starting to appear in the Hyundai camp. In fifth spot, Alan Mitrovich and Mike Burrows in the Team Total Golf GTI threw caution to the wind at the water splash. A deep breath, full speed ahead, and nods of approval from the big crowd there to see the fun and games. Tony Ball and Brian Duncan in the Team Total Golf GTI also decided on the full speed ahead and to hell with the consequences approach. Ball and Duncan made it through safely enough and earned full marks from motorsport legend Jan Hittemer, who twice won the Castrol Rally. When Hergen Fecken and Neil Ferry arrived on the scene in the Team Total Toyota Conquest, their incident-packed rally had taken another twist. They rolled the Conquest into the sugarcane, but it was typical of their approach to rallying that they were still in attack mode. Apart from leading the video sport pioneer plastics off-road challenge, Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake now had a firm hold on fourth overall in the Castrol Toyota Hilux. Fellow off-roaders R.P. Renica and Robin Houghton demonstrated the worth of bulk and power when the roof got a little too tight, and Hergen Fecken and Neil Ferry kept the Toyota service crew from getting bored. Latest member of the Rally Poly Club? Ah, uh, it's one of those things uh, which happens on rallies. What actually happened? Ah, uh, 90 left closed, closed down on us, and these sugarcane roads, we hit it sideways and the car just went over. With the final rebunch of the rally at Mkhlume just around the corner, a hard at work Tony Ball and Brian Duncan were leading Class S16 for South African cars and trying to close the gap on sixth place R.P. Renica and Robin Houghton in the Bankfin Toyota Land Cruiser. Some of the locals weren't interested in the progress of the rally, but after the problems encountered by Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson in the Bankfin Hyundai, a fired up Sorrel van der Merwe and Franz Bosshoff could sent a stunning victory. Ball and Duncan were still trying to make up ground, but the body language in the Bankfin Hyundai told its sharp own story. Right is sharp left. Sharp right here. Is sharp left. Left, left, left. Is straight on. While massive chinks were appearing in the Bankfin Hyundai armor, Hergen Fecken and Neil Ferry were up and charging again in a team total tour to conquest that was now bearing the scars of heavy battle. There were no such battle scars on the Team Total Golf CSL of Barry Krobler and Pierre Aris, who were second in Class S19 to Paolo Piazzamusa and Cindy Harding. Little cameo performances were being enacted throughout the field, but the real drama lay with Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson, who were in trouble again on Special Stage 35. The Hyundai was coasting along when a plume of smoke spewed from the back of the car. It meant only one thing, more turbo problems, an absolute disaster for the team, with Kuhn's expression saying it all. Guy, how much time have you got here? Uh, we have about seven minutes uh, available to us, but uh, say changing the turbo will take us about 25 minutes. So the penalties will definitely drop us out of the lead right at the end of the rally. What can you do? Sport can often be cruel with one man's sorrow, another man's good fortune. I think we're happy at this stage. We feel sorry for them, but it's, it's, it's one of those things. And uh, if our cars can last till the end, it's going to be good news, hopefully. With just three special stages to go, it was all over by the shouting, and all that was needed was for Sorrel van der Merwe and Fr